Hello there everybody and welcome to my second foray into box file modelling and my first in narrow gauge. So, this is the plan for the layout and I've even got some wagons here to use as scaling. So, I've got a main line back here as such, it's just one track. Uh, coming from a rural scene into a more urban scene. It worked quite well on Lonesome Street Station um, and the core principles of Lonesome Street are being used in this, including having two fiddle cassettes on each side of the eight, uh, each side of the layout here to allow continuous running. Uh, but if you choose not to go down the continuous running, you can come down here into a little stationary area or maybe a factory. I don't really know. It depends uh, how much size I'm actually working with. Um, but one wagon looks quite cool there, so maybe it will be more of a offloading area than a traditional station. I, would, I, I did want to build some kind of cover, but I think that would ruin some of the photography opportunities that I want. So, yeah, that's this for the moment. If I just put mid potteries number one on, yeah, I think I'm just spitballing at the moment, but I think, yeah. Probably be more an offloading site here than a station, um, but still make it pretty funky. Maybe have some people pose there. It would give me the opportunity, I suppose, to run some passenger trains in, maybe if they were workers' trains. But yeah, an embankment used on this side um, as a scenic break. Uh, couldn't do that on Lonesome Street, but I'm quite looking forward to doing it here. This is kind of like a mirrored image of what Lonesome Street is, apart from having the continuous run uh, along the straight rather than the point as it is on Lonesome Street. But yeah, an embankment for trains to disappear behind here and a more urban one here, which would be brick built. So I've got an idea for the track plan. So I'm gonna cut it out and apply it to my baseboard. By using the track, I could work out how big my embankments were or rather the, how big the track actually will be. Now I'm using corrugated card for this and I'm gonna paper mache over the top because I'm still in primary school, which is not too far off the truth to be fair. <laughs> I'm gluing the track down with no more nails because it's the strongest solvent I had to hand. And then I've built the embankment and I'm using Hangy Basket Liner, which is a tan colour to represent long dead grass. It meets the vibe, I think, for somewhere that's a little bit industrially, uh, kind of getting out of town sort of way. It works quite well. You can see I've also ballasted here. Uh, I'm adding part of the factory on here, the loading dock. And I'm adding a bit of ballast in the middle here just for the sake of something uh, to break up somewhere that's quite flat. Here I'm attaching some of the um, walls for the bridge. Which won't work. Yeah. Here's the layout in all its tiny unfinished glory. We've got trains that are too big for the layout running at the moment. We've got mid potteries number one and mid potteries number three. Double heading, uh, top and tailing a works train. And we've got a little diesel representing the layout when it could be used to represent it when in the mid potteries has been absorbed into the NCB. I will do a video on the whole history of the line, but I'll do it with a running video so it just needs to be finished. But the broad end of it is, initially it starts out a little bit like the mid Sodal light railway, um, like in the railway series, and eventually gets absorbed by the NCB, which is running the Heapton Colliery light railway, which is my standard gauge industrial modelling, and becomes part of the NCB to move slag about. So, I'm going to strip the stock and carry on talking. Because this layout is designed actually a lot like Lonesome Street, my standard gauge exchange sidings, which was also built in a box file, well, two. Because both have got just one point and both use fiddle cassettes. Like this, two of them, there's one with the wiring all attached to it, and there's another one. To help me get the most running out of what is effectively a very simple track plan. The fiddle cassettes go here and here, one in the urban part where we are now, going out, and then one in the rural part here as we're going out. Now, I'm just going to put one on here, but I just thought it wasn't worth it. I like the little factory siding look. The plastic card is butted right up to the rail head. It requires me sticking some card on, as you saw, but it's butted right up. And that gives a really, really nice factory look. In fact, I'm going to roll one of the wagons in. There we go. It gives it a really nice factory look, you know, with some figures posed around and 
some general industrial clobber, clobbering up this part here and here. I think it's, it's going to look the part and it gives me the chance of running some shunting services, you know, so some trains are going to come in, shunt it out, that kind of thing, maybe coming along the main line as, main line as such, dropping a wagon off, having to reshunt the train with a brake van, that kind of thing. It gives me a lot of opportunity and not a lot of space. If I'm honest, here, we shouldn't be able to see through. As you saw on the other part of the video, I did initially build two brick walls that were going to be used to create a scenic break. Now, I didn't like them, so what I've decided to do is use the same material as the base here, and I'm just going to do it again, but out of one sheet and just cut out a hole for the tunnel mouth here. It'll be done in red brick, so the same colour as that, it'll be weathered down, much like that will be, and it'll just give that more urban look that I'm looking for. Um, it'll be squared off about here, so the factory siding uh, will have enough room for a wagon to come all the way down, but also uh, you'll be able to see from along the eye line of the brush. Um, hopefully it'll be nice for some photography opportunities, as well as creating that more urban look that I'm looking for on this side of the layout. Again, the hypothesis for this layout is very similar to Lonesome Street in the sense that I want to represent a lot in not a lot of space, so there's got to be a lot of hinting at being done, and brickwork is a nice way to hint at you going into somewhere, red brick especially, you're going into somewhere that's quite built up, quite urban. Whereas these rolling hillsides, the embankments, the cuttings, that's a lot more urban, uh, rural, sorry, that's a lot more you going out into the farmland that are, is connecting the towns together. So, I'm going to continue to spin the layout, and you can see just how <laughs> simply this was built. I'm amazed, like, this strut, this uh, strut here fell, and I decided to leave it because I quite like the angle that it created. But it's nice flowing hills there, um, just hanging basket line we use for that. But what it does do, using this slightly taller hillside here, it gives us the ability to use this as another scenic break. So if I was to put number one, if you want to see a video of number one, it will be linked in the description below, as I've already finished that. It's a nice little product. Like. Anyway, you can see it's going to disappear quite well there behind the scenic break of the embankment there. Um, and again, it's quite, over, it's quite visually a lot, this tall embankment here. Um, so hopefully that'll be offset by some brickwork across here and it not really finishing off the layout, not boxing the layout in too much. That's what I'm very conscious of doing. It's quite often on box files you end up being boxed in. Um, so by leaving that space down here that I previously mentioned for the train to come all the way down to the end of, hopefully I'm not boxing the layout in too much. Now, you can see here the pile of ballast that I thought would look quite cool, uh, doesn't. Uh, it needs more work to it, so I'm going to blend it in using some more ballast, some more paints, but it's a start. That's kind of what this layout update shows us. This is the start of the layout. There's still a fair way to go, although it is mainly detailing from here. The bridge is the only major bit of building work I've got to do. Everything else is neatening up. So, things like this. Must be doing your head and must have taken me moving stuff on and off. Things like the rails here, they're just bits of old um, Hornby track that I don't really use anymore. Um, so I've trimmed some of them up. I know, sacrilege. Um, but they're being placed on the side there. I need to work out where I want them to go. I've got three bits. Just, again, it makes it look a little bit more lived in, a little bit older as a railway kind of thing. The track needs more weathering. Um, the ballast looks okay, actually, but um, I need to paint the sides of the rails a dark, rusty colour. I also need to put a point mechanism up here. I'm just going to use one of the old crash models ones, and hopefully that should give a little bit uh, of realism to the layout. This needs knitting up down here, weathering. This pot needs clipping away here. It's overhanging. and that needs to be painted black because you can quite obviously see that's card. But a lot of the stuff from here is just detailing and neatening. So all in all, I'm really impressed and having used this layout a little bit as well, um, using a Hornby System 90, I'm really impressed at how much I was using it. Um, considering it is just one running line with the potential of doing a tiny bit of shunting, I'm really impressed and a lot of the stock looks nice on it. So, 
number three, as I mentioned, I'm working on that video as we speak. So that'll be out the week after this. Um, so on Saturday morning or evening, depending on what I want. Uh, and number one's already got a video. Chance the other diesel won't have one because that's just, uh, I've had it for ages. But the stock looks right on it. I was very conscious that because these are 3D prints that have been bought from different people, the wagons are from different people to the locos, they were all different from each other. This gives an opportunity for everything to look right in one place and to give the hint of that railway that's not doing very well, but is just about ticking along. And that's the impression that I wanted. And I think I've achieved it so far. As I say, a fair bit of detailing needs to be done. So if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. If you want to tell me how can I, I can improve the layout or the video itself, again, let me know in the comments section below. As I mentioned, the dropping the camera was not part of the plan, but you know, retention. Number one has got a video. Number three has got a video coming out next week. And hopefully a whole layout update for this will be back very, very soon. So thank you ever so much for watching. Try.